All right, so this is going to be the discussion on mole conversion. So on your paper, can you solve this for me? Uh, $1 is how many quarters? $1 is how many quarters? Now, some of you might think, well, Mr. Vu, I don't have to do this in my paper. I can do this in my head, right? You would then say, well, $1 is four quarters, right? Simple, $1 is four quarters. Now, the question is, how did you do this? Can you write this out? So to write this out, you have to know a couple of things. First, you have to know what's given to you, right? So this $1 right here is called the given. That's the given amount that I gave you. Then you need to know what you want. And that's basically this part right here, right? What do I want to convert it into? I want to convert into quarters. To go from the dollars in the quarter, you have to know what we call conversion factor. Conversion factor. And a conversion factor is just a mathematical expression of one unit for another unit. So we know that in conversion factor, $1, okay, and conversion factor is for anything, $1 is equal to four quarters, right? So we know that. We know that in our heads already, so we know the conversion. So to do this conversion factor, what you would do is you will start with a given, right, which is $1, and then you would multiply by... Uh, four quarters is in one dollar. And then you would do this math and dollar would cancel out and you will have what's left would be four quarters, right? So this is what you would do in your head or on paper if you didn't do it in your head. Because what? It's pretty easy. You know how to do this, right? Okay. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do mole conversion, which means we're going to convert moles into mass from mass into volume, volume into the number of particles. And what do we need is we need to know what the given is. We know what uh, we need to know what the want, what do we want, and we need to know these conversion factors. All right? So here are the conversion factors for moles. Now, we know from yesterday or the last lesson that one mole of any substance is equal to the molar mass of a substance, correct? One mole of any substance is equal to its molar mass. Now, remember, the molar mass is different, so you have to calculate for every single uh, compound. Now, we also know that one mole is also equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, right? Okay, 6.02 times 23rd particles. And because, remember, that's Avogadro's number. So one mole is always equal to this many particles, just like a dozen is always equal to 12. Now, there's one more conversion factor I'm going to put in there, which is one mole is equal to 22.4 liters of volume, basically. Okay, so one mole always take up 22.4 volume of liter. Later on, we will change it. Okay, but today we're going to do, uh, say it's 22.4 liter at what we call STP. And STP... And STP here is what we call standard temperature and pressure, okay? So standard temperature is going to be zero degrees Celsius and pressure is going to be one atmosphere. Don't worry about that too much. Uh, the reason for that is because pressure and temperature does change the volume of the, of the substance, okay? So don't worry about that. All everything we do today is going to be at 22.4. So this is what we call your conversion factors, okay? So these are your conversion factors. And it's really important, all right? So what you're going to do is we're going to do some example problems. And from the example problems, you're going to see how it works, right? So remember, you're going to basically, the setup for this whole thing, right? The setup is going to be the given amount, the given amount, you're going to multiply by, by the conversion factor. So the given, so this is going to be a conversion factor, then that should equal the want amount, basically. Okay? So this part right here is the conversion factor. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the units and the, uh, and the conversion factor part of the given, you're going to put it on the bottom. Okay? And then the want, you're going to give put on top. So this is the conversion factor. Sorry, that should be an F. So the conversion factor of the want goes on top. The conversion factor of the given will go on the bottom. So that's the basic setup, right? Once you see it, it's going to be really easy, all right? 
So for example, let's say I have 25.3 grams of chlorine gas. I want to know how many molecule of chlorine gas is that, right? So if I have this mass, I want to know how many molecule. It's like saying if I have this many dollars, how many pennies is that? Okay, so it's the same thing. So what we need to do first is to determine what's given and what's won. So if you look at your problem, what is given? Well, whatever is given to you should have a value, which is the number, the unit, which is the gram, and the substance, which is the chlorine. So this number right here is your given. Okay. And in a in a in an equation or an equation, I'm sorry, in a sentence, again, you're looking for what? You're looking for a number, the mass, or the unit. And of course, the substance, that's the given. What do you want? Well, they're asking for the number of molecules of chlorine gas. Okay, so that's what you want. So first we have to have that. And once we have that, we have this given and we have this one. So we know where we're starting and we know where we would end, okay? So now all we're gonna do is rewrite this. I'm gonna rewrite the given. So the given is gonna be 25.3 grams of chlorine gas. Then I'm going to do this middle part right here, which is conversion factor. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to here again. I'm up to this conversion factor uh, list. And I'm going to find the given unit. The given unit is grams, which means it's going to be the molar mass. Now, notice in the molar mass, I don't have the number, right? So I have to calculate the molar mass. So I know that the molar mass of chlorine, this is what we did in the last lesson. The molar mass of chlorine would be... Two chlorine, so the molar mass of chlorine would be basically two chlorine, and two chlorine is two times the 35.45 grams per mole, right? That means that two chlorine is going to be 70.90 grams. So I know what the molar mass is. It's going to be 7.90. So where am I going to put that? Since it's a given, I'm going to put it on the bottom. So this would be 70.90 gram of chlorine right here on the bottom, okay? Now for the top, I want the what? I want the, the want. So that means I want this because I want the number of particles. Now remember, particles particles here could be molecules, could be atoms, could be formula unit. It could be anything, right? So that's the only thing that is like other stuff. So I have a number here, so I'm good. So I'm going to put this number here. So that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And remember, instead of particle, this is going to be molecules. All right, I mean molecules. All right, so once I'm done, once I'm done with that, now I can do the math here, okay? So once I complete the math, a couple things you want to see is, you notice this number right here is the same as a fraction, correct? All right? Now, if you notice that you have grams in the numerator and you have grams in the denominator. So if you have grams in the numerator and in the denominator, what happened? They cancel, right? So grams is going to cancel because they're diagonal to each other. If you have grams in the numerator and grams in the denominator, they will cancel. So now all you have is now these numbers that you can now put into the calculator and solve. Okay. So I'm going to start doing this problem. Anything on the top, I'm going to multiply just like doing math. You're going to multiply across and you divide down, right? So I'm going to start with 25.3. 25.3 multiplied by the 6.02 times 10 raised to the 23rd power. Equal that. And then I'm going to divide that by the 70.90 on the bottom, which means I have the answer as 2.1. Let's say round to two decimal place. So that's 2.15 uh, times 10 to the 23rd molecules of O2, okay? And that is my final answer. So now a couple things I wanna show you is how do you type this scientific notation in your calculator? Now, some of you, I hope, have a scientific calculator. And if you have a scientific calculator, it's gonna be very easy. To type this in the calculator, all you're gonna do is follow these steps, okay? So if you wanna type in 6.02 times 23rd in the calculator, you're gonna go six, 0 0.02 times 10, find this little carrot. For me, it's over here, okay? It's just a little hat. For you, sometimes over here, sometimes on the top there. 
So find that little carrot, 23. Now, when you type that in, make sure you have parentheses. So you want to go parentheses, 6.02 times 10 raised, or it's carrot 23, close parentheses. That keeps this whole number a number, okay? If you don't do that, chances are it's going to mess up on your calculation because this stuff, this thing right here, it's not very smart. It only does what you tell it to do, okay? So order of operations is going to be very important. Make sure you put all scientific notation in parentheses. Now, for some of you, you're looking at your calculator and go, uh, Mr. Vu, I do not have that carrot. I do not have that hat. What can I do? You can have the same thing, but it's a little different. So in your calculator, without the hat, you will go parentheses, 6.02, okay? And then there's a button that has an E and an E on it, okay? And then you just basically go 23rd, close parentheses. That's the same thing as 10 to the 20, uh, 10 to the, okay? If you have a scientific calculator, it's really easy. You can just go uh, um, exponent 23rd. Now, there's, a, there's another way to do it, okay? There's definitely another way to do it. There's 10 to the X and all that stuff, but I don't touch that because it makes it messy. But I do it this way. So that's how you type in the calculator. So when I type this in, I would start with 2.53, multiply by parentheses, 6.02 times 10 raised to the 23rd, close parentheses, equal, okay? That gets it everything multiply on top. Then I'm going to go divide by the bottom, all right? So when I do this, I'm going to basically start with 2. 25.3 multiply by this number equal then divide by the 70.90 and then equal then I would have this answer okay so order of operations is very important make sure you hit that button near there just in case because sometimes it will work great sometimes it won't work at all make sense all right so let's try one more here Let's go with, let's say I have 2.3 times 10 to the 24 atoms of, let's say, argon. I would like to know what is the volume of the argon, okay? So I have this many atoms of argon floating around. I want to know how much space it's going to take up at what we call standard temperature and pressure. So the first thing I'll do is I'm gonna write my conversion factor. So I'm gonna write my conversion, oops, conversion factor, okay? And I, that means it's one mole is equal to molar mass. Now remember molar mass, I never have a number because it depends on what it is. This time it's argon. It's equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Okay, of argon in this case. So in this case, the molar mass of argon, if I look at my periodic table, is 39.95 okay, grams. So that's the molar mass. So I have, this is just for this problem, which is equal to 22.4 liters at STP. So notice the only number I, I changes all the time is going to be the molar mass. The 6.02 times 23rd is always going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And the 22.4 is always 22.4, right? So the first thing is I got to figure out what's my given. So this is my given right here. This is what's going to give to me. What do I want? I want the liter of argon, right? So the first thing I do is I'm going to write the given, which is 2.3 times 10 to the 24th atoms. Notice all the writing. Make sure you do it, please. You're going to need to do this, okay? Argon. Then what I'm going to do is I'll multiply by the conversion factor. So remember... What I want goes on top. What I'm given go on the bottom. So remember, the given is the atoms, which means this is the given. Okay. And the want is going to be liters. So this is the want. So I'm going to put 22.4 liters on top because that's what I want. 22.4 liters goes on top. And then I'm going to put on the bottom the, uh, the, the, the given, which is basically 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, okay? So notice, again, this is like over a fraction. So atoms on top, atoms on the bottom, they will cancel out. So now all I have to do is do the math. So again, 
I'm gonna type in my calculator. So on here, I'm gonna write in, write down what I'm gonna type, right? So this is the calculator part, calculator. So this is what I wanna do typing in. I'm gonna go parentheses, 2.3 times 10 carat 24, close parentheses, multiply by 22.4, equal, divide by parentheses, 6.02 times 10 carat 23, close parentheses, equal, I should have an answer, okay? So I'm gonna do that on my calculator. So I'm gonna go parentheses, 2.3 times 10 carat 24, close carat parentheses, Divide that by 22.4. I'm sorry, multiply that by 22.4, actually. Multiply by 22.4. Equal. Then I'm going to divide that by parentheses. 6.02 times 10 carat 23. Close parentheses. Equal. And I get basically 80, whoops, 85.58 liters of argon gas. And that is my answer.